My hands are too cold. I can't even move my finger. Yep. Yes. In the Bible, he's referred to as the king of Salem at one time. As was suggested by some interpretations of scripture, he actually had no beginning nor end in time. The order of Melchizedek is the hierarchy of manifest proxies of the righteous one and only. There is no one person of that name, never was, is now, or ever will be, forever and ever. So that Melchizedek, the order of Melchizedek, is really referring to people who reach a certain level of enlightenment or awareness where they feel identified with God and they and they experience that and they and they become part of the order of Melchizedek maybe consciously or unconsciously they're part of the order of Melchizedek oh. but but Christ had a mission that was unique to Christ there have been other there have been other sacrificial lambs throughout history, uh, but none, none so articulate, none so knowledgeable as Jesus of Nazareth. So the greatest strength of the King James Version, but also its greatest weakness, is that it's not very realistic language. Um, it, it's filled with a lot of um, sort of beautiful phraseology and beautiful words and descriptions, um, but it's not very historically tangible. I mean, it, obviously the scrolls and the things that, that um, the Jews have access to and have always had access to are far more realistic portrayals of, of the story. Um, so, so I don't trust translation. I don't trust interpretation. I trust my experience.
taking on a national presence. And everyone that sees these faces, they want, they want them. They want them in their community. And uh, thank you so much for stopping by tonight to take a look. Appreciate this. Appreciate you taking an interest in my students' stellar work. I'm proud of them. So proud. So Stephen, I'm so glad you stopped by tonight. Um, I'm Professor Evans from SUNY Broome, and these are my beginning drawing students. This is a uh, five-part, uh, three-year uh, project, and uh, the students choose marginalized and overlooked people every semester, and they learn how to draw the faces based on archival photos and text. And the theme of this uh, entire project is to show more kindness and compassion towards those that are different than you. And it's also another uh, idea here is that uh, to have meaningful work it impacts not only you, but it impacts the community. The first uh, set of faces that we did, we did women suffragists. For the second set, we did Holocaust survivors and non-survivors. And then we did the Underground Railroad. This semester, the students are doing war veterans. Next semester, they will do Native Americans. And in March of 2019, we will have a best of the best series of faces on the SUNY Broome campus where I, I will choose six of the very best and put them in one room. And my hope is to invite all my students that drew these, drew these faces and to have my students stand by their easels and explain to the people that are visiting how they drew these faces. You know, form and content. Through the forms, there's some content that's profound that can change people's lives. I teach them structure first, and, and they do the structure in outlines, lines. And I tell them that once you've got the expression on the face, just by line, just because line direction is very, very important, then you're good. You're good to go. You can go on to the next step, because there's two steps in drawing, and that is the structure, and then the decoration of the structure. East Berlin, West Berlin, this past summer 17, 2017, that's when I decided that was going to be the next category of faces, the Holocaust. But when I went into that mausoleum, they, the faces were larger than life. And I, I guess it was just through osmosis that I, it, it just continued on through because you walk into a space where these faces are this big and they're all lit up in a dark area. Well, let's see. What I do is very much celebration of power. It's very much a celebration of the narrative arts. Uh, there's things that people don't necessarily think of as artistic. Comic books are seen as kids' stuff, and video games. That they don't think they're, they don't realize the amount of art that goes into these things that people consume in huge numbers. But they're not the type of things that are necessarily celebrated in gatherings. Uh, they are a bit in some bigger cities, LA, New York, but you know, small towns or cities or Binghamton, for example, or most of the country, they don't see it as art. But I have always thought like comic artists are some of the best illustrators in the business. And the people who design the concept work behind video games and films are incredible. So I like to celebrate narrative arts. I like Every time I change, it's with a different company. I've worked with Lucasfilm, I've worked with Nintendo, Crayola, Nickelodeon, NBC, Universal, I've done pieces with 20th Century Fox, I've done pieces for anime companies like Viz Media, Aniplex, Crunchyroll, but it's always on individual freelance basis. So they, you know, I've worked with them several times, but I come back and go, and it's never, I'm not doing anything with them under a regular, steady uh, contract. So I, I'll have non-disclosure agreements. I can't talk about the work before I do it, but once I do it, it's done. There's nothing like that. I'm allowed to, you know, display and continue on afterwards. I'm going to be, I've heard a lot of conventions, and right now I'm working on uh, a series of appearances for the next year. The thing is contracting already out in May, June, etc. I'm also working on like a long form story that's completely my own, but that's nowhere near what we talk about or show anything of yet. It's still in the planning stage, but hopefully sometime late next year I'm unveiling that. So I've already got projects in the work, but a lot of what happens starts to surprise me. Sometimes I'll get a company contacting out of the blue. It'll be, yeah, in a month and a half, we need to come and do a giant piece for us at a convention or a show. It's, a lot of times it happens short notice. So like a mural size poster? I'll do these, most of the chalk pieces at my show are performed live, like at New York Comic Con, San Diego Comic Con, stuff like that. And they're, 
on average, 9 feet wide by 13 feet tall. It take about 30 hours to complete from start to finish. So it's all done live at the show. I know, but show. it's a transient thing, but if somebody took a really good picture of it, they could do a mural on the wall. That's my, that's my gallery. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and that's how my pieces live on. That's how I'm able to have a gallery show. It's prints and images of my work.